Majesty, Graces, Nilfgaard's crossed the Yoruga. Black clad hordes, villages burn, folk lie murdered. Welcome to the official gameplay walkthrough for Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales, a brand new RPG adventure set in the dark and brutal universe of The Witcher. My name is Pavel Buja, I'm the community manager at CD Projekt Red, as well as your humble guide in today's video. The story of Thronebreaker is set before the events of the first Witcher game, during the second Nilfgaardian invasion, and follows the story of Meeve, a war veteran queen of Lyria and Rivia. The gameplay you're about to see takes place near the beginning of the game. After returning home, Queen Meeve finds that not all has been well during her absence and an Nilfgaardian invasion on her kingdom is all but imminent. Reynard, I've seen Nilfgaard's trebuchets at work. Should we delay until we're stronger, they'll leave no stone standing in Dravagrad. We must ride for the town at once. Without further ado, let's dive into the tale, shall we? As her men prepared to march, Meave In the interest the of time, tower, and to avoid some nasty spoilers, we'll skip right to the moment the when the Queen and her retinue arrive at the castle of Dravagrad. However, do know that Lyria is by no means other. a small kingdom, and there will be much along the way that will ask for your attention and sometimes barn, require it. Another mill was in flames. Tears welled in her eyes, yet they were tears of anger. Bastards. If it's war they seek, it's war I shall win. Reynard, prepare to ride! Look at the palisades. The machines of war, too many to count. I cannot fathom it. Has Nilfgaard sent all its forces into Lyria? No, Your Grace. For a single army. Gods protect us. The Queen uttered a juicy curse. Dravagrad stood before them, Nilf guardians all round it, three, perhaps four battalions of armored infantry, arbalists and cavalry behind them. Trebuchet volleys had punched holes in the walls, while battering rams had twisted the main gate open. But put elsewise, the city was mere moments from falling to the foe. Doomed! We stand not a chance. Nilfgaard outnumbers us twofold. More! Then our men must put double the spirit into the fight. Double the heart. Lyria! Emboldened by their valiant queen and commander, the Lyrians charged headlong at Nilfgaard's lines into a hail of bolts and arrows. All right, we're heading into battle. In Thronebreaker's story-driven battles, your army, as well as that of your opponents, is represented by cards with commanders overlooking the battlefield. We can replace a certain number of units to take into combat with us before each battle. Let's do that now. Attack! Rid this city of all black-clad filth! Your Grace, I see the command. The battlefield is we divided into two sides, with each side consisting of two rows, melee and ranged. You can send any unit onto any row, but keep in mind placing some units on specific rows will grant them special bonuses, as well as the ability to attack units otherwise unreachable. Battles are divided into rounds, and rounds into turns. In order to win, you will be required to either outright defeat your opponent, overpower the enemy's forces by gaining more points, or meet other special requirements. I'm coming, I'm coming. Many units come equipped with powerful abilities. Some, like the War Wagon, will summon additional units onto the battlefield. Others may rain down arrows on enemy forces, for example, or cover the battlefield in devastating magic. Your most powerful weapon, however, will always be skill, strategy, and wits, which will allow you to overcome even the most unfavorable of odds. There's a finite number of units you can place on each row, something to keep in mind when sending your forces into battle. Using the Wagenberg's ability, we are able to attack the enemy's range row and deal a powerful blow to the enemy, but sacrificing the unit's defenses in return. The enemy has decided not to send more troops against us for now. 
Let's play another unit to gain the advantage. Abolista, your command. This should do. Time to pass. All right, it seems we've managed to fend off the enemy forces, but the battle is far from won. Between rounds, you'll draw additional cards, which again, you'll be able to exchange if you wish. Regress, there, on the horizon. Reinforcements for the foe. The enemy is weakened, but not for long. Reinforcements are on their way. Let's prepare to summon some of our own. Again and again. The Regiment Drummer's Order again. ability allows us to call Blitz units into battle directly from our deck, greatly improving our odds of winning. Army's a waste of time for one like me. I'm a monster. Commanders also come with their own sets of abilities, and we've just used Meeves to deal damage to the enemy. Should you choose to use her ability on friendly units, this would boost their strength and defenses. As you continue your journey, you'll discover new weapons Meeves can equip. Each one grants her a different ability. Time I taught you some respect. Hail Catzer. Reinhardt's ability allows units with order abilities already on the board to use them again. It's a very powerful skill which can turn the tide of battle, especially if you use it at the right time. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. The battle is looking good. We've got the advantage, but we shouldn't let our guard down. The Empire of Nilfgaard is a powerful adversary and should be feared always, especially since the enemy still has many units at their disposal. Off to the front yet again. What do you want of me? Can't take it anymore. Quiet! Oh, the Commissar will hear. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Brach! Scheiß! In! Try! Give me a target. This is it, time to see if we manage to build up enough strength to overpower the enemy. Off to the front yet again. Yes. Es Zeifel. El Hertha. Yes. They retreat. Your Majesty, the city's ours. Nilfgaard is retreating and we've managed to take back Drevograd. Let's see how this impacts the story. The Nilfgaardians fled in panic, abandoning war machines, shields and arms, even their wounded. The defenders rejoiced. They laughed boisterously and cries of delight and chanting could be heard all around. Warrior Queen, they shouted. Meave, Meave, Meave. 
Hear that, your grace. I do. No sound rings more lovely to a ruler's ear. Yet rest on our laurels, we cannot. Caldwell, the situation in the town, what can you tell me? Wall breached. Thrice. 400 wounded, near a thousand without roofs over their heads. All nothing compared to the grain stores. Went up in smoke during the siege. And it's some time yet afore the harvest. Your grace, the war's just begun, I know. All coins should bolster the army, yet if we leave the folk of Dravagrad no gold, there will be hunger. With all the attendant dis Throughout the story, you will be tasked with making many difficult choices. These will not only determine the kind of ruler Meave becomes, but also the fates of her people and closest ones. The drought of 1258 I remember all too well. I saw famine, what it drives folk to do, the extremes. A strong army I need desperately, yet not at all costs. The townsfolk need gold to survive till the harvest. Count how much, then give it to the garrison commander. As you command, your grace? The battle we've won, there's just the war that remains. And Nilfgaard will strike again, doubt it not. We must move on. Caldwell, ride ahead to Lyria. My son must call a gathering of the Council of Peers. Tell him so. We'll have much to discuss. Reynard and I will follow with the troops. We shall seek out any Nilfgaardian stragglers, prevent them from rejoining the main force. Some immediate, some far-reaching, eventually a Means time will come when you have to deal with the consequences the of the decisions you make. She was hungry, sore from the fight, spent. Yet sensing her soldier's eyes upon her, she set off for the stable. Her gait brisk, her head held high. The world of Thronebreaker is a living and breathing one, and will react to your actions, as well as your presence. Milady, a strange boat floated past. I thought it imperial, but it flew not black sails, but reddened. Deep red, like blood. It seems we've stumbled upon a side quest. Let's go and investigate. Horn sounded. Meave recognized them at once as those of the Lyrian vanguard. She drew her sword and prepared to face the invader. Yet coming down upon her force were not Nilf guardians, but bearded warriors clad in leather, horned helmets on their heads. This... this was not so. The Queen could not believe her eyes. Skelligan raiders? This far inland? But this was no time to be bewildered. Meave spurred her horse. It neighed and reared, and then the twain leapt into the fray. Looks like we're being attacked by Skellige, Islander folk of Viking-like warriors who cherish combat above all. Unlike the one at Dravagrad, this battle is shortened and will only last one round. Otherwise, the rules remain the same. Either overpower the enemy's forces or defeat their commander, Lippy Goodman. Skellige! Reynard, what the devil? Sea Raiders here! Lippy will duel the most powerful unit on the battlefield at the end of every I'm turn. Coming, every coming. time this happens, Lippy will lose strength equal to the strength of the unit he dueled. Let us put our steel to the test! The enemy is strong and we've got a limited number of cards available to us. Let's use the field medic to bring back one of the fallen units onto Tell the battlefield. For Rivia! Fortunately for us, at the heat of battle, Lippy might sometimes attack his own men. Skelligers can be strange and scary people sometimes, but you can't say they haven't got guts. Again and again and again. We'll ransack your temples! Wipe ourselves on your vestments! A 
spirits willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. The Lyrian Sidemen's unwavering loyalty in combination with the unit's passive ability increases its strength every time Meave uses her ability, just like now. Army's a waste of time for one like me. Cards are blowing fair winds the day. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Aye. We've already used up the ability of both of our regiment drummers, but we could really use more of it in this battle. Let's use Reynard to reactivate it and then call for support. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. You can try to win them all. The Light Infantry's order ability allows it to switch rows at our command, for example to free up some space and fit more units in a particular row, or trigger another unit's ability. Lugos will be bursting with blade! Lippy's starting to lose steam, but we're almost out of cards. It's going to be close. <laughs> You've got stones, wench! Now take that treasure! Tear your colored off with it! Hunger Black Hand's taking on new swabbies. What do you say? You got, got it. Can't let you through elseways. The Skelligers fought hard, fought bravely, brought mayhem. Yet the Queen's ordered, disciplined force won the day. The Islanders seemed entirely undismayed at their defeat. A trait of theirs, I must admit, I've ever admired. Well, you're right, Scrappy, for landlubbers. Lippy Goodman applauds you for your pluck, Queen. When we sup, me and the lads will drink Despite your the out. circumstances of our meeting, Lippy could greatly aid our fight against Nilfgaard. Let's see if we can get him to help our cause. That we shall yet see, sir. We must know something first. What brings you this far inland? What drove you from the sea? Meave asked, crossing her arms. Ha! What always drives us? Luton and Pelican. The coast's pecked clean since long, so we set our longships up the Aruga. For gold and glory! Amusing. I always assumed you to be honorable folk. And who dares to claim elsewise? Your very actions do so. You've attacked a land preoccupied, a land already at war with invaders. But I suppose it makes sense. You've ever feared to attack Imperials? The Queen prodded gently. What did you say, wench? Goodmund had quickly turned red with rage. I prove just how wrong you are, I will! Why? We'll be drinking mead from Nilfgaardian helmets for sundown. Follow me, lads! Meave smiled as she watched the islanders gather their gear and prepare to march. She doubted not in the least that Goodmund would honor his pledge. 
We've managed to get the Skellige party on our side. The battle has also left us with some loot, gold and raw materials, which we can use to upgrade and customize our army and war camp. Time is of the essence if we are to stop the Nilfgaardian invasion. Let's move. On their way to the capital, Meave and company happened one fine day upon a lone rider. Had I been at her side, I would immediately have recognized his passionate gaze and altogether chivalrous mien. As you traverse the world of Thronebreaker, you'll come across many interesting characters, friend and foe alike. Denel I am dubbed, and my design I never conceal. The good book says the world is a garden which the gods once conferred upon man, and we men have this garden neglected. In consequence, all manner of filth has made its lair here, drowners, ghouls, and other kobolds. I have sworn ne'er to rest until the day when, with the gods' help, I have rid the world of these beasts and pests. I wander all lands, seeking out evil and facing it in mortal combat. Who do we spy? A knight errant? Hmm. Just as likely a madman. We could end our conversation with Ake and continue exploring, but he seems intriguing. How goes your hunt? Caught the trail of any monster? Monster? Too fair a term by far. An exceptionally vile worm has made its lair in nearby caverns. It is said to be the very distillation of filth. A slither in horror. A melange of the macabre. Its head, that of a wild cat of Ophir. Its maw full of spiked teeth. The wings of a bat it is said to have. The tail of a scorpion, and from it, a thick venom drips. Learned men call this variety a manticore, or mardiacore. Perhaps it will be most prudent, then, to send for a witcher. A witcher? <laughs> Soulless automatons they are, all, feeding on common folk's fears. What they demand gold to do, I perform without demand of any coin. Sir Egg, far be it from me to discourage you, your endeavor is noble, no doubt, but from what I have heard, manticores are exceedingly dangerous beasts. To defeat this filth alone could be a difficult task, I'll not deny. Yet try it I must, for it is what I have sworn before the gods. Perhaps there's an opportunity here to gain a new ally. Let's see if we hmm. can help each other out. We shall help you find and fight the manticore. Provided you then pledge to help us fight an even fiercer and filthier beast. Of course, my lady. Yet what manner of horror is it? A vipper? A griffin? A drake of some rare form? Were it only. Tis a beast of a thousand heads, covered in black armor, its fire consuming whole villages. Noble lady. I know bestiaries only in parts, yet I've seen some of the world, and never have I heard of such a terror. You need but look about you, and spot Nilfgaard's legions. Devastating. But you must forgive me, Your Grace. This struggle between realms is not one to which I can lay a hand. A manticore. How great is its appetite? How many men does it fell, in a moon, let us say? It changes. At a time when the horror broods, it may be as many as twenty. I see. As now you must. Nilfgaard, in my capital, could mean as many as twenty thousand felled. You live to fight evil, injustice, do you not? You can fight none greater than by doing so at my side. The Manticore, Your Grace, must fall first. As to what happens later, I shall need to consult the good book and petition the gods. Agreed, so be it. This monster, where lies its lair? Where does it prowl? To the north, my queen. A few leagues on. Let's head north and find the Manticore's lair Sir Egg spoke of. Not a scrap. Nothing to bury. 
Blood soul that's left behind. Before we continue, there's a notice board here we can interact with. Notice boards add new markers to the world map, revealing a variety of points of interest. These, among others, include side quests, challenges, treasures, resource locations, some we've already discovered, and many more will appear as we continue exploring. Illyria is just the first of five kingdoms you'll make your way through in Thronebreaker. Alright, let's get back to the task at hand and head towards the Manticore's lair. Tis in these ravines. The beast is near. I sense it. At the furthest depth of the winding, gloomy canyon, scouts found the maw of a great cavern. Among the boulders outside it, whitening bones lay strewn. Ake dismounted and drew his blade. By the gods' grace, we found the beast's lair, he said, lifting his gaze to the heavens. We need them but to extend their favor as we battle the filth. Meave cast a critical eye at her shield, wood clad in leather and thin plate. Enough to stop a sword, certainly, but would it protect her from a beast's raging blow? Noticing her hesitation, Raynard approached the Queen and said, Your Grace, none will utter a disparaging word should you step back. But they will think them, replied Meave. And that's bad enough. The war has begun. I can't appear weak to my fighting men. Without awaiting an answer, Meave strode into the cave. The rest of the company followed, equally full of fear and faith in their queen and commander. Moments later, a great and powerful roar filled the cavern. We'll need to defeat the Manticore within a single round. This time, however, we're facing a powerful monster. The only way to win is to kill it. This setup looks good. Let's begin. And I beheld the beast! Profane horns didst adorn his wicked brow! The Manticore is built out of six cards, God's each with its own strength and ability. To kill the beast, we'll need to destroy its head and do it fast. The Manticore's claws are sharp and his tail is laced with deadly poison. Each of the monster's attacks will be devastating in consequences. I'm cool. Beware its claws! The hardest plate they shred like fine vellum! Oh, Lyrian lummoxes. Meave's attack was not strong enough to damage the Manticore's head, but did end up wounding the beast's wings. We'll have to find another way to attack the monster's weak point directly. Army's a waste of time for one like me. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Every time our units receive damage, Sir Ake's resolve to defeat the Manticore grows, and with it, the knight's strength. This gives us a fighting chance, but only if we survive long enough. Can't take it We suffered a massive blow. The beast has obliterated five of our units, but it also seems that the confrontations have cost the beast one of its wings, as well as damaged its weak point. The Manticore is about to strike with its tail, which is able to kill a unit instantly. This will cost us. Abolish to your command. 
Another attack is incoming. We could destroy the monster's wing, but we won't change the fact that our units will take damage. We must trust each other. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Let's send out a Lyrian Arbalist and have it attack the beast's head. This should put it in rage of Sir Ake's attack. Time to finish this. Prepare to fight, if you've any honor. We must thank the gods for this victory, both great and just. With Ake at their side, the Lyrians felled the Manticore. Later, it was said, the beast's dying wail multiplied and strengthened as it passed through the caverns could be heard as far as Spala. Your Grace, many monarchs have I met in my time, yet none proved as virile in battle as did your Majesty. Virile? I dislike the term. Seems not to suit a woman. I prefer valiant. Yet grateful I am for the compliment. Now pray reveal, have you made your decision? Will you swear to serve me? Are you prepared to take an oath? I am not, Your Grace. I can serve only the gods. Yet, I do believe them to be on your side as one unjustly and treacherously attacked. Thus I see nothing wrong in assisting you. Then I am content and welcome you in my ranks, Sir Ake of Donnell. The knight errant bowed low. The Manticore the is defeated, and we get to live so, another day. Fact, and Sir Egg decided to join us. Creep. That's a win, albeit a costly Meave one. Could only Let's head into our war camp and check out the state of our army and see how we can improve beasts. it for the battles to come. Most camp buildings can be upgraded in your workshop. Seeing how important it is to have your troops be at the top of their game, the training grounds sound like a good place to upgrade. In the command tent, you can recruit new and additional units as well as manage your army's composition. Defeating the Manticore has earned us its trophy card, which sports quite a useful ability. Let's make some room and add it. Also, let's recruit another regiment drummer. It's been a really useful unit so far, another one will definitely come in handy. Reynard and Ake should be in the mess tent. Let's go there now. The mess tent is where you can talk with your companions. Doing so will allow you to learn more about them and deepen your bonds, which is sure to have an effect on their performance in combat. Let's talk to Ake and see if he's settled in yet. I see you found the mess tent. How's the ale? Not too warm, I hope. Tis not for me to say, Your Majesty. My tankard holds but milk of the goat. Milk? A witless prank. I shall tell the quartermaster at once what I think of such... Unnecessary, Your Grace. I called for the beverage. Is that so? Well then. The good book states clearly, the shadow of spirits obscureth light most true, and leadeth thee from the path of virtue. Right. I suppose there's something to it. My soul sings to hear your affirmation, Your Grace. If ever you wish to discuss the good book and the wisdoms contained therein, hesitate not to find me. 
Certainly, I shall remember that. <laughs> Your crusade against monsters. Have you been at it long? Come next Bellatane, it will be 20 years, Your Grace. Though, there was one extended interruption. For what reason? Had you grown weary of the Knight Errant's life? Not in the least. Never shall I cease in my quest to cleanse the world of filth and abominations. But at times, at times evil puts up rather a good fight. I ventured forth to slay a dragon once, a gold one, as it were, calling itself Villa Tretelmeft, or the like. Its very name, as is evident, a vile toil for the tongue and wafting wickedness. A great many mercenaries embarked on the hunt, lured by the promise of coin in heaps. The Crinford Reavers, Yarpen Zigrin, and a band of dwarves, even, curse the word, a witcher, one Yennefer, the most lecherous sorceress, at his side. Hmm, that name I've heard. But at the deciding moment, when the beast challenged all, I alone emerged to face it. Alas, though, shame burns me to admit it. I returned from the battle upon my shield. Figuratively. Literally. I returned in pieces. For two years, I lay in the temple of Melitale in Alanda. Mother Neneke, God's protector, nursing me back to full health. And only when I could once more grip my sword did I return to the path I'd chosen. And the dragon? What was its fate? Some claim it flew off to Zeracania, though it very well might yet lurk here awaiting the opportune moment to terrorize the folk of the north. This concludes our Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales gameplay walkthrough. We hope you'll Farewell, enjoy eh? playing the game when it's out on October 23rd on PC only on GOG.com and December 4th on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Thank you for watching.